is Renewsha, Acht Tagesseven of the Pagli, Liam and Mayland, ladies and gentlemen. What can you say? It's been a brilliant evening's entertainment. A few things strike me. When I was seven, I joined the library in Austin with your predecessors, and um, I remember talking to, to uh, um, a road school in Castle Bar shortly after I was elected in 1975. I thought there was somebody who could change the world. Maybe they might change a bit of it, but anyway. I remember coming out of the courthouse, and uh, I said to the man who was Michael, I said, you know, tell me why you read so much. And he left on his brush and he said, um, I read, he said, because when I go home in the evening, it allows me to put my mind on the same plane as great writers like Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. Young Kenny learned a lesson that evening, long before the internet. So I remember the words of the poet, you know, when he said, um, mm -hmm. For off from in and on my couch I lie in vigor and pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. How many houses have you been in where somebody has passed away? And what passes around? The book of photographs. Because the video plays. And things come back that you didn't see or feel or smell or understand for years. And I mentioned the library because when I went on to other things, I wasn't back in the County Library in Castle Bar for maybe 30 years. And one day I was passing down and the caretaker of the late Billy McLaughlin was there and I went in. And it was like an adrenaline shock. The smell, the shelves, the environment of books, of words, of stories, of pictures. The same as this evening here. There's a few of these pictures actually strike me very much. I've never seen a resemblance of father and son, yeah. like Miley and his father. It's like an older brother from his younger brother. Um, I recall very well the day we went to in his talk. Myself and Martin Joe, God rest him, Dennis Gallagher, God rest him, Patrick Drunken, now a member of the, of the bench, and uh, myself and Paul Flynn. It was a choppy sea. Flynn split his trousers to get enough the small <laughs> before we left. And he and his boat. And uh, a half a mile over a couple of very big waves, and he came back to me and he said, What are we going to do if she goes down? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to foretold the future. I said to him, Well, you won't get up on that machine to turn the side of the towers of Valley Road, will you? <laughs> See, what's happened here is. Uh, collage of the evolution of our county and of our people. I was born in 1951. When I was going to school, it seemed to me as if 1960 and 1921 were prehistory, were so far back in ages that they were, you know, um, irrelevant. You couldn't appreciate them. And that was sort of 30 years before I was born. And now you go back, and many of you can go back further than me, for a much longer period than that. So it's not been a long time at all. It's actually been a very short period. Because it's all in your minds, but just to press the button. Nowadays everybody's got the mobile phones, and they're all photographers of some description or other. And I find myself at functions and whether you're grinning or grimacing or trying to smile, it's, it's incessant because it's an instant picture. And it's not one that's developed in the way that Liam started off and other photographers are having to do the business. It's gone around the world before you can blink. Instant. Instantly. And yet, when you consider that there's a small man-made object 300 million miles out in space, waiting for a comet to come in November, on which it will land, and be slung shot over on the sun and come back in whatever time with its pictures. 
And yet here in Westport, in Hotel Westport, we have on the screen this evening a brilliant evening's entertainment. It tells us about ourselves, who we are, and who they were before us, and in some cases, who they're going to be in years to come. So it's, all, it's also about the fashions of the day, sideburns, the locks, the long hair, the short hair, or whatever else. I, I pity the referee down in the room. I'm not sure who he was or whether he recovered. Um, but that was uh, indicative of the passion, not only of the Duomo League, but of the Scandinavian Cup and elsewhere. I remember being in Castlebar in 1961 and Aidan Brady pulled down the crossbar and they had to go and get a plank of timber from the Deacon factory to put up a crossbar so that the second half could continue. <laughs> Maybe some of the players on both sides needed a rest. I like the shot of Tony Chambers here. He was Pat Lindsay's election organiser for years and he was down in Borashul one day in the home of a Church of Ireland lady, very well spoken cultural woman, and she didn't realise the extent of the number of candidates in the old constituency of North Mayo who were standing for that election. And she said, Would you read them out for me? And uh, he read out the names, and when he came to Lindsay, she said, Is he one of ours? Meaning, was he of the same religious persuasion? Get your coat, says Tony, we go. <laughs> we didn't wait to qualify for the pot religion, uh, Mr. Lindsay was or not. But I think the, uh, what you've done is a collage, as I said, uh, of the social, physical, <coughs> infrastructural development of our county. Look at the numbers who turned up for the free bingo. I remember being down at the end of James's Street when the soap boxes, as we call them, came down the hill. And uh, the late Donald McAlin from Castle Bar was one of the Ferrari drivers of those soap boxes. And I can still hear the scrape of the, uh, of the boards on the wheels or on the ground that was used as a brake to slow them up before they got to the bridge. With the crowds who turned out, and those with the long coats. And yes, there were uh, traffic jams all over every town. And you were right not to support that it should continue as it was, or there'd be complete mayhem out here. And as he put it very well, they were going up and they were going down, but they were going over at all. <laughs> I think our name was a bit of a boy, the way he went. His commentary here might be a bit conservative. Some of those pictures there, roving eye, roving camera, whatever else, well done. So, I like the uh, prints from the uh, black and white photography. People <coughs> seem to find something a little more evocative deep within ourselves in some of these pictures. Of course, Liam Lenz's work uh, is not just with ourselves, it's all over the world. And many of his more famous shots are those of landscapes. And I was coming here this evening in over the top of Shia. It was a, a huge orange orb in the western sky and that path of light in from Kerr Island that um, William Makepeace Thackeray said was one of the best views he'd ever seen in the entire world when he came here so many years ago. And that landscape, that sea, that island, the mountain, the light, is all part of the personality of Liam Lyons, born and bred, child and reared here in Westport. Because those pictures are evident and hang in places all over the world. He told me the story just last week when I called to visit him about saying a few words about this, of some of the, uh, the ways he had to, he had to uh, take some of the pictures like the bride down in Australia who forgotten the ring, I think it was, and he had to go back to the house and couldn't get in, the key was lost, and he got a ladder outside in the shed and went up to the back window and got in and came out and left the ladder back and did his photographs. 
Oh, that brilliant picture of the Pope Patrick with the for cloud formation in almost perfect triangle up and down is uh, one of the great natural shots that you'll ever see anywhere. So what he's done really in uh, dealing with Mayo County Council is akin to the to the Wynn collection and the Lawrence collection and the Brown collection and now the Lions collection. Remember a picture of Wynn's uh, shot there? There used to be a photograph in that window of a man who looked like Parnell, who was old Mr. Wynn, with a heavy beard looking out imperiously into the distance. And it was there for years. And if you tried to put up the advertisement today for Craven A on, on Sunday, Craven Butts on Monday, <laughs> where it says they don't affect your throat, <laughs> Can you imagine uh, the situation that you'd have today with what went on? I launched one of the, um, the uh, veteran cars in uh, Stevens Green a few years ago. And I saw many of them here, the prefix and the Morris Oxfords and the, and the Dauphines and the Volkswagens and all of that. And God, when you sit into them, in comparison to the kind of safety features that are built into cars now, and the narrow tires, like tin boxes on wheels, these things were used to drive all over the country and as we heard from his own mouth to Dublin in just less than three hours on bad roads and lots of corners and all the rest of it. So it was a, it's evidence, you know, of, of the way we were, of the way we were. And I suppose happy we were with our lot. I had a little boat so I could carry myself, pulled in the hay for the neighbours with it, and drove to the dances from here down to Enniscrow. I broke down in the middle of the night and in the morning. He gave lifts to people. He used to bring the children home. Uh, obviously, you, you can't do these things now because like Dan McGinn, things have moved on with standards and conditions that don't apply uh, in the way they used. So, so his decision, actually, uh, to provide all of these 200,000 pictures, these 200,000 social histories to the people of the county is a magnificent gesture. A magnificent gesture, Ian. And you are to be <laughs> And they are all stories. I still feel the shock myself. I know exactly where I was when the news came through of the murder of John Morley, and his picture there is evocative of that, you know, one of the greats of male football of his generation. And I see, I, I know that Sean Rice is down there, but before I came here, I opened the little Bilberry's preschool there in Traveling School on the way over to Castle Barn. And people were saying that Sean was here, famous, interviewer, journalist, writer. And I said, yeah, but what about the other half? Because when I had the privilege of going to America two years ago, you meet the vice president in the morning, then you meet the president in the Oval Office, then you have the speaker's lunch on Capitol Hill, all the senators are there, congressmen, bishops, the cardinal, the politicians, the would-be politicians, and the speaker of the house um, leader of the house, John Boehner, gets up to speak, and he said, and quoted from one of the poems of Pauline Rice, from Island 80, Castlebar, County Mayo, put it right in the central position on Capitol Hill in Washington. So Sean was always a humble man, like when he walked out of Tune Stadium with his bare feet after Mayo lost the match way back in 1960, whatever year it was. So this compendium is not just for us now, but people who browse through those stories and social histories and videos of places we were, people who knew, um, of times that happened, the incidents, the funny incidents, the humorous incidents, Tragic ones, poignant ones, and I was leaving all of that are the memories that we carry with us and pass on to each other, and the landscape that will be with us eternally. 
I think that's the measure of Liam Lyons. I've grown up with him knowing him as a photographer, but also as a professional, as the ultimate professional, because he was one of the foremost photographers of his generation. And certainly his messages and his pictures from the west of Ireland were worth knowing him and moving on the conveyor belt of life with something that you would see very often on special occasions. And he always knew, and still does, and even from his explanations this evening, the, the picture that the photographer sees is very different, and can be very different, than the subject that the photographer is actually taking my think of this. Because they look for something special, something individual, something remarkable, and something that lasts. And that's the key to all of this. Because when this room, is empty of all our mortal beings, the pictures of Liam Lyons, and the stories that go along with him, will live to stand the test of time. To you and Mabel, thank you on behalf of us all. God bless you. Finally, to reply, I want to call on Peter Hines, CEO of the Organic Cancer.